everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Becky aka One Little Earthling and I've been making videos about having a dog walking business from the lessons that I've learned from my 10 years of experience. And today I'm going to be talking about what dog walkers won't tell you and that's the pros and cons of being a dog walker. Okay, I'm going to start with the cons because it is better to end on a positive note. So let's start with the fact that your heart will inevitably break. Um, the bigger your heart is, the more animals that you allow into your heart. Um, if anything happens to any of them, you're surely going to be um, quite upset at some point. So. For example, if one goes to vets for surgery, you're just going to be worried about them. Or if one dies, you'd have heartbreak almost as if it was your own dog, because you're probably going to be very much a part of their lives. I know other dog walkers who've had clients that, that have had to be put down and they've been invited by the family, knowing that you're a meaning part, meaningful part of that dog's life. Um, to see them before the last day and they go off to Rainbow Bridge. So. It's one of the most difficult parts of this job, but the love outweighs it. Point number two. So the public will love you or they might hate you. Um, and that comes to the territory if you're walking in public spaces. Some people like seeing a big group of dogs and welcome it. Others are very intimidated by it because it's out of the norm to see. Not that many people have that many dogs in one go. So seeing a group of them can be intimidating, hence why we now have private land. You'll regularly hear comments like, you've got your hands full. Are they all yours? You're not allowed to walk all those dogs. Take control of your dog. Even maybe if it's just their one dog that's acting out of control. So beware of the public and their opinions. Point number three. So I hear most dog walkers are solo walkers and I hear that sometimes that can be a little lonely. Point number four. So walking ends up becoming a mission. This is in public spaces. If you're walking in public spaces, walking ends up becoming a mission of endlessly head counting the dogs to make sure everyone is there and dodging members of the public and their dogs. Um, even if um, another, per another stranger is beelining for you because they are well intending to meet you and your dogs in your pack and have their dogs play with your dogs. It does make me personally feel a little anxious um, because I never know if that stranger is coming over because they feel entitled to scold me for the number of dogs that I have or befriend my dogs. And well, as I say, that is um, that could be a good intention. It could potentially lead to an accident that you or I would be inevitably liable for because you don't know how your dog is going to get on with another dog or another stranger person. Point number five, I believe. So you can become a bit socially introverted and um, almost a form of dislike towards people <laughs> because of it. Um, dogs are like children to people and there are many opinionated folk, maybe it's just a UK thing, who believe it, there is a very, they are very opinion, opinionated about the right and wrong way to care for them. Um, so be prepared again for members of the public and even other dog walking businesses to take pictures of you, your van, your dogs and post it on some group with a completely false story to cause scandal. Um, yes, it's slander. They're probably very bored and have nothing else to do. No, it's not okay. It's an invasion and violation of privacy. Um, and yeah, please don't be one of those people. <laughs> I do have a degree of understanding why people might be a bit arsy as the industry is unregulated, technically anyone can have a dog walking business and I'm sure that in some cases it might have helped some people who were not being responsible and being a bit reckless. 
but I hope through making these videos I can somewhat prepare you and help you be set up with the best start and with that comes a uh, big heads up that there will be some people who are there to critique you but keep your head high and carry on point number six so physically especially at the beginning um whilst you're getting used to the level of activity you're going to have to do and the simulation for you personally you will be tired your body will ache <laughs> And as you build up the stam, uh, as you're building up the stamina, your you will be tired. Your body will ache. Um, I highly recommend a lot of self care for your body and your mind. I mean, regardless of industry, but especially one that's physically demanding. Take care of your body. Um, incorporate some massage. Um, ensure you do have downtime and um, make give yourself a lot of time off. Go on a holiday um, because as tempting as it is to work on weekends or help people when you feel like they're in need or go beyond your regular working hour hours please make sure you prioritize your mental and physical well-being because it is very draining and time intensive and you've got to be the best version of yourself the most energetic well-rested version of yourself in order to provide a good service and look after these dogs properly Point number seven, so you are guaranteed to lose a dog at some point and it will be very stressful. Um, most dogs return after 10 minutes of their solo exploration, especially for example, having chased a squirrel into the woods and this would have been the same scenario as if just their dog parent was walking them. I've never had a dog properly lost, but it is a risk that does come with the job. Hence again, we have rented space that is fenced because we learned that safety and peace of mind far outweighs walking in open public spaces. Point number eight, be clear with the expectations of owners. When you come to collect their dog, a reminder that you are not a house cleaner, you are not a groomer, you are not the postman, nor are you the rubbish man. Some owners will ask for extra favours and you may need to remind them of this. Obviously, if I don't step over mail if I see it on the floor, I'll put it in a safe place. And if the dog is in a bit of a state, I always ask for a towel to be at the door so I can rub them down, but I am not going to shampoo and condition and clip, etc, etc. So just make sure you manage um, their expectations. You have one job and that is to exercise the doggy. Exercise and socialise in a safe manner. Yeah, I always give a heads up um, by saying during the meet and greet that if it's been a particularly muddy day, your white doggy might not come back in the exact same pristine condition, but I will do my best to rub off um, the worst of, worst of it. If they insist that you clean their dog, you could always offer to drop them at a rumours, because that's what rumours do. Um, also, to remind them that you are not responsible for the mischief that their dog might do in their house once they've been dropped home. So it's good to get this all clear and out of the way during a meet and greet, know exactly where to drop the dog in the house that they're allowed so that they don't mess up the house in the absence of, of a person and just make sure the expectations are managed so you are not um, stretched beyond the call of duty and leaving the other dogs in the van waiting for you because you've just you've been dragged into cleaning a house. If you haven't set up your business so that you are not so that you are paid in advance, you will you, there will be a learning curve that a lot of time will be wasted chasing clients who have not paid and several of them you will financially lose out. So please make sure you are paid in advance. Moving on to the pros. So point one. Being outside is good for your mental and physical health. I can't imagine staying inside all day at the computer. I'm a very, I need, I'm somebody who just needs to keep moving, but yes, being outside in nature is amazing. Point two, 
animals are zen masters you get so much joy out of watching them get joy over the simplest things in life so just watching a retriever run around with a stick is just reminds you to really appreciate the simple things you are self-employed you can work on your own terms and in your own time Number four, there are enough dogs for everyone. You don't need to be, it's not a competitive business because at least in the UK, nearly every other household has a dog who would appreciate not being left home alone or the socialization that comes from being other dogs or being exercised. You can always recommend um, dogs to each other and there will never be, this, this business is always in demand. You will be driving a certain amount every single day when you are picking up dogs and dropping them off. And I find that um, kind of a hidden great opportunity to make it productive. And I often use the gift of extra time as education time. I listen to a lot of podcasts, whether it be building up my business or personal development or learning about an entirely different topic or um, audible books to further my professional development or even learn a language. That's a nice slot of time in the day to focus on something that you're interested in or want to learn about. Point six. So at the opposite end of heartache is the fact that you have a lot of love for other animals and your heart feels so full and it fills my life with joy to see them having such fun and knowing I provided the space for that. Point number seven, and maybe it's one of my favorite points. Dogs don't care what you look like. <laughs> you don't have to be dressed up to impress at all, wear whatever's comfortable to you. Just make sure that you feel good and you feel comfortable in your clothes. And if you do choose to look good, make sure you look good for yourself. I'm not a solo walker as most walkers tend to be. Um, I do walk with my sister most of the time because we co-share the business, um, which means I've made space in my life for family time. I do often drag my mum in to help out, sometimes my dad, sometimes my boyfriend, to lend a helping hand. So that's great that I can tie in that time with the people that I care about the most. So yeah, that's the pros and cons of dog walking that dog walkers wouldn't tell you straight away. Um, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe. And if you're looking forward to the next video, pop me a question in the comments down below what you'd like me to cover next. And I will see you in the next one. Happy walking.